Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Body and dash cam video from San Antonio police officers over three separate shootings released yesterday. This morning we have the breakdown of each of those videos. Plus the latest happening at the border. Officials in Mexico are now speaking out about the increase of traffic at the border and what they're going to do about it. Oh guys, we might have another triple digit day on our hands. Sarah Spivey, whose birthday it is today, is forecasting potentially 100 degrees and hopefully our last as we are in our second day of official fall. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock on Sunday, September 24th. A very special day today. Sarah very Spivey's special birthday. day. You know what's amazing is a lot of people will take their work day off if it falls on their birthday to celebrate their birthday, but not Sarah Spivey. No. Sarah Spivey is <laughs> and I got cranking out the weather today oh, David, on her birthday. I got mad at her. I said take your day off or at least take no. Monday off. Nope. She said no. Dedicated. Well, you know. Thank you guys for that. Uh, but I wish I could have some nicer weather for my birthday. I'll be honest with you. Temperatures today are going to be near 100 degrees. If we get to 100, it'll be our 75th time to see 100 degrees this year. 78 degrees outside right now. It's 78 at Sinton, 73 in Bernie, 74 in Kerrville, 75 in Hondo, and 79 in New Braunfels. Here is that forecast for the day today. Mostly sunny and hot. 83 at 10, 91 at noon, 100 for the high. Feeling like 105 because of the high humidity. South winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's some good news though. Temperatures are going to fall in the week ahead into the low 90s. Still hotter than seasonably average, but nicer uh, by the middle of the week. And late tonight and tomorrow, there's at least a chance for rain. A chance, not a guarantee. I'll have those details ahead for you coming up in just a few minutes. David. Thank you, Sarah. A top story we're following this morning is a shootout that shut down a freeway after an officer accidentally shot himself, plus two more shootings with the same theme. KSAT has received the body and dash cam video for three separate deadly shootings involving San Antonio police officers. Familia Juarez breaks down what the video shows for each of those shootings. The first shooting SAPD released video of happened August 30th. Officers were looking for 40-year-old Michael Kirkland, who had a warrant for aggravated assault against a public servant. Dash camera video shows two patrol cars surround a car where Kirkland is seen driving away. He begins driving the wrong way on I-10 East Access Road when he crashes into another car. Kirkland appears to run into a grassy area as officers shout at him to drop his gun. Drop the Body cam video shows Kirkland pointing a gun at the cars driving by. Then we see two officers fire, killing him. That same night, officers were following what they say is a stolen car to a Home Depot parking lot in the 600 block of Southwest Loop 410. Dash camera video shows the driver take off. An undercover detective is seen yelling, telling 21-year-old Victor Fernandez to get on the ground. Then a single gunshot is fired, and the undercover detective falls to the ground. KSAP previously reported 10-year SAPD veteran John Helley accidentally shot himself in the torso. The body camera video switches to the uniformed officer chasing Fernandez, who shoots him several times. It's unclear if Fernandez pulled the trigger, but video shows he had a gun. Fernandez died, and Helley was taken to the hospital. Several days later, on September 4th, officers approached 27-year-old Jacob String, who was wanted for four aggravated robbery warrants. The body camera video shows the officer yelling at String to show his hands. String is seen pulling a cell phone from his left pocket and putting his right hand into his pocket. Then one officer tases him. As String falls to the ground, a body camera video shows him holding a gun. Both officers begin firing several shots, striking and killing him. The district attorney's office is reviewing these cases and they will decide if each case was a justified shooting and if any charges are warranted. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Now the latest on the border, Mexico promising to help the migrant crisis in the United States, starting with our Texas border. Officials in Mexico tell U.S. Customs and Border Protection that they're going to work to deport migrants in Texas border cities and return them to their home countries. The Defense Department is sending hundreds of service members to El Paso to help with the migrant crisis. They'll join 2,500 National Guard members already at the border. It's not clear when that help will begin. 
We told you a few weekends ago about the Houston teen that was suspended from school over his lock hairstyle. His family is now suing Governor Greg Abbott and Texas Attorney General Paxton. In a lawsuit filed yesterday, the family says 17-year-old Daryl George's suspension is a violation of the state's Crown Act. The lawsuit also says that Abbott and Paxton didn't enforce the law, which went into effect earlier this month. School officials have said that George's locks violate the school district's dress code. It reflects his heritage uh, that he's being he's not being allowed to wear this hairstyle uh, because it violates a policy which violates both common sense and I believe violates state law. George's family has previously said they were told that the teen would be sent to an alternative school if he refuses to cut his hair. Abbott and Paxton have not yet commented. We are learning more about how a 16-year-old brought a gun to school. Some of the video we're about to show you may be graphic. This happened Monday at Texas City High School right outside of Galveston. It comes just two weeks after the same student had a fist fight with a classmate and also punched a deputy that was breaking up that fight. The student's father says they had a family friend staying with him who kept a gun in his car. He says his son stole that loaded gun and then brought it to school. Let's hear more from that father. This is a, a situation that could have gone way worse, and we're, we're apologetic. We wish we could have caught this. He's a good kid. He, you know, he, he just he has very troubled past, and he's had a very hard life, more than anybody else has had. The father says Texas City ISD is aware that his son is known to be violent. The boy is now facing three charges for fighting the student, hitting the deputy, and for bringing the gun on campus. It's been almost a week since Texas Senate voted to clear Attorney General Paxton in his impeachment trial. And now officials are calling the trial rigged. So some of the critics of the verdict, including House Speaker Dade Phelan, continue to accuse Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick of rigging the trial. But Patrick denies interfering with the jurors' decisions and lobbying with senators. There are now growing calls for House Speaker Dade Phelan to resign after these allegations. Experts say it's only the beginning of a long season of political revenge. We want to give you some history on this Sunday morning. We've got some new photos from a men's Bible class here in San Antonio that date back to 1922. Here they are. This was a class at Central Christian Church. The church was on North Main Avenue in Navarro Street. The photos were taken at the Gunter Hotel back in 1922. The group had hundreds of members, all San Antonio men. The class reported attendance of almost 400 men one Sunday back in 1923. I love seeing those history photos. Look at that. It's awesome. And of course, Maine and Navarro were probably two of the main streets in San Antonio, not too much more yeah. around in 1922. And now we go past 1604 right. and beyond. <laughs> Those guys would probably not believe it, what happened. <laughs> 808, 77 degrees. Well, coming up on GMSA at 8, striking writers in Hollywood studios are set to meet today. We'll see if this could be the end of these strikes. And some experts say fall is the best time to start a new job. We'll take a look at which San Antonio businesses were voted best places to work this year. And the verdict has come out on where the best spot is to see or enjoy that solar eclipse. We'll put on our eclipse glasses and take a look after the break. Man, outside with live cam. Ooh, Sarah Spivey's birthday. She's bringing 100 degrees to the party. She's bringing the heat. Wow. <laughs> Gotta love that. She's coming up next. We'll be back. Want to know where you can snag some free glasses for the upcoming annular eclipse happening on October 14th? The San Antonio Public Library will host Get Eclipse Ready programs through the rest of September and October. Participants will receive eclipse viewing glasses on a first come, first serve basis. And while we're on the topic, let's talk about some basic info and why you need these glasses to view the eclipse. First off, since the moon won't completely block the sun during the annular eclipse, the remaining part of the sun visible can still cause retinal damage if your eyes aren't properly protected. Always inspect your solar filter before using your glasses. If you find that they're scratched or damaged, maybe don't use that one. Read and follow any instructions printed on or packaged with the filter and always supervise children. We've got more information on the importance of these glasses plus a full list of events happening around San Antonio during the solar eclipse on our website, ksat.com. 
Well, new report from Space.com says the Home Depot parking lot, oh my gosh, this poor Home Depot parking lot in New Braunfels is supposed to be the best spot to see the eclipse happening on October 14th. This is according to Space.com. I don't know, Sarah. So it recommends going to the northern or southern edge of the path for the best chance of seeing the eclipse, which for Texans is about 30 miles north along I-35 from San Antonio. The Home Depot is located right next to Canyon High School, so plan early if you want wow. that parking spot. I need to I need to investigate this a little bit more. Yeah. It's coming like, from space.com, Sarah. I know. Okay, but here's the thing. New Braunfels is on the edge for the annular eclipse. So the actual annular eclipse will not last quite as long in New Braunfels. So Maybe it's on the edge, but know, it's like Let me do some more research. Bam. I'm not going to poo-poo that report before I understand it. Probably AI did that for you. Something like that. that okay. Just, it plugged in some numbers. And okay, so coming up at 8.30. Spit it out. She's going to have a little more research on that okay. spot. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> just giving right. Sarah homework Let's on her birthday. Let's go ahead and wow. take a look outside right now with uh, live cam. And you can see that temperatures are starting to warm up under mostly cloudy skies. 79 degrees outside. Dew point of 74. South winds at about 10 miles per hour. So those south winds are really uh, cranking up the humidity for us today, which is going to be a major factor. 74 in Kerrville, 75 in Uvalde, 82 in Del Rio. It's 80 in Kennedy, 80 in Catula, 73 in uh, Kerrville. And as you look at the KSAT 12 hour forecast, we are going to be seeing clearing skies here. By noon, 91 degrees. By uh, 4 o'clock, 100. Again, today could be our 75th triple digit day of the year. And by the evening, temperatures will be in the 90s. It's not until late tonight in the overnight hours that we start to introduce a chance for a few showers. More on that in just a bit. But again, look at the forecast highs for the day today. 104 in Del Rio, 100 in Uvalde, 104 in Catula, 100 in Gonzales, just below 100 degrees in the Hill Country in Kerrville and in Canyon Lake. Our average high in San Antonio this year is 88 degrees. So we're going to be 12 degrees hotter than that. 100 in Rio Medina, 102 in Castroville, 101 in Seguin in New Braunfels, 101 in Sabinal, 99 in Utopia. Humid weather for us during the day today, so there will be a heat index value. You. This is how hot it's going to feel in your neighborhoods during the peak heat of the day, 4 or 5 o'clock. Lost Maples, 105 degrees. It's going to feel like 105 in Castroville and all around the San Antonio metro area, feeling like 107 for Seguin and New Braunfels. Now, it's not all bad news. There is a small chance for rain uh, in the next 24 hours. That heat high, which has been the reason why we've been so hot this entire summer is starting to move off to the west and in its wake we have got a low pressure system with a weak cool front moving through texas you can see that there's some storms in Texarkana. Outflow boundaries from these storms are going to be pushing south, bringing the potential for at least a little rain to the Houston metro area today, well east of San Antonio. And in the later afternoon and early evening hours, there will be a few isolated storms, perhaps near to the Austin area, as a result of the outflow boundary of those storms in Houston. Then as we head into the overnight hours, that front will be approaching the hill country. A few storms will develop closer to that that front right around midnight. So this is tonight into tomorrow north of our KSAT 12 viewing area. This is not great timing for storms because as they lose the daytime heating, they lose their fuel. So these storms will weaken potentially before they even make it to San Antonio early tomorrow morning. But if you're up in the hill country, you at least have a chance for some rain. Then that front is going to stall out tomorrow and that boundary is what's going to allow a few showers and storms to pepper the radar across south central Texas tomorrow afternoon and evening coverage will only be about 40 percent. So keep that in mind. Coming up uh, at 830, we're going to talk a little bit more about if any of those storms could become strong or severe. I'll have those details for you again. Only 30 to 40 percent chance tonight and tomorrow. So not great rain chances for us. At least those temperatures will be coming down. Highs will only be in the low 90s. Better than nothing. Better than nothing. And at least it's going to be less humid and yeah. more pleasant for the middle of the week. Any amount of rain is better than no amount of rain. I agree. We need the rain. Yep, we do. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. 817, 78 degrees. Are you in the market for a new job? After the break, we'll 
see what workplaces were voted the best here in San Antonio. And if you have been missing out on all those new shows, there may be some light at the end of the tunnel after the break. We're going to see if there will be an end to that writer's strike anytime soon. And some lottery numbers. Pick three, two, five, six, fireball is six, and your daily four is one, nine, eight, five. Fireball is three. Cash five, one, two, three, ten, thirty three. Texas Lotto, eight, twenty eight, thirty six, thirty nine, forty six, fifty one. No winners from the Powerball last night. 1, 12, 20, 33, 66, Powerball 21. Power Play 2, jackpot is nearing 800 million. Uh, could be some good news. Striking writers and Hollywood studios say they'll meet for the fifth straight day later on today. In a joint statement issued late last night, both parties said they met for bargaining. People close to the situation told CNN that the major film and TV studios delivered their best and final offer to the WGA. The industry's writers have been on strike since May 2nd. And if you watch TV, you can tell it. There's nothing good on right now. Okay, good news for employees that are fans of working from home. So a new study from the National Academy of Sciences found working from home is better for the environment. Experts say it could cut a person's carbon footprint by, get this, 58% compared to in-office in work. Hybrid work is also helping. So working from home two to four days a week cuts a person's carbon footprint by 29%. The study used multiple data sets, including energy consumption surveys and employee data. The San Antonio Business Journal named the top places to work for 2023. In order to qualify as a top place to work, businesses must be one where employees trust the people they work for, have pride in what they do, and enjoy the people that they work with. And why we think KSAT is the best place to work, because we've got great bosses. Wow, they're fantastic. Obviously. <laughs> Beautiful people to work with. We didn't make the list. No. Oh. But here's a In our one. hearts, it made the list, made David. The list. <laughs> Broadway Bank, LK Jordan Associates, Oakhaven Massage. Massage. Ooh, yeah, that's probably a good place to go. Yeah. Especially when you're working out or something. Yeah, they were named some of the best places to work in San Antonio for 2023. Did we make honorable mention? No. No? Okay. Well, we still got the best place to work. Um, <laughs> Frost Bank and Google, the city of San Antonio, was ranked 12th in Texas and 2nd in San Antonio by Forbes as one of the best employers in Texas. I've heard that, that the city, city of San Antonio wow. is great to work for. Yeah. You love working at KSAT so much. How many years have you been here now? 39. Wow. That's, um, David, that's incredible. That is truly incredible. It's been a while. <laughs> I started back when, well, never mind. <laughs> okay, since you're our special guest this okay. morning, David, we want to quiz you on San Antonio oh, no. history. On he didn't okay. look this up. He doesn't even know this was coming. I, I don't. What, what is this? Okay. Uh, what drink was invented by San Antonio? Ah. What drink was invented by a San Antonio? Is it Fanta? Gatorade? Well, I think it's Gatorade, isn't it? Or Dr. Is Pepper. It Gatorade? I don't know. I'm uh, going to... Gatorade. Gatorade. Very good. So yeah. it was invented by San Antonio native Robert Cade. Yeah. He was born here in 1927. But it's. I think they started, when they made it and everything, they started it in Florida at like Florida State. It was like an Florida accident. University of Florida, yeah. Something okay, like here, that. next question. What's the record oh. for most tamales ever made in San Antonio? 17,000, 15,000, wow. or 18,000, David? I'm going to go with 18,000. Me too. Because we can make some tamales. Oh, 17, oh, 17 close. Good. Well, see, we have some, we, see, we have some work to do. Okay, so this happened at Lanier High School. They hold the world yeah. record for the most tamales ever made. This oh. happened in 2011 oh. uh, you know in what? December. I was there that day. Did you, were you I live? Did, I did the story and you knew, that day. And you don't remember? I, did, I thought it was 18. Well, you've been here remember. 39 years. They yeah, all kind of yeah. run together. <laughs> Ah, thanks. <laughs> okay, next wow. question. What fast food place had its first location in San Antonio? Raising Cane's, Five Guys, or uh, Churches? Well, I think fast food first opened I in San... I, I don't know, Churches. Is it Churches? Sa churches! Oh, it is Churches. Yeah, Church Churches is chicken? old school. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that first location used to be across the street from the Alamo, according to the Church's really? website. George C. W. Church opened that location in 1952. Very cool. Okay, you should know this. I already know this one. 
Which NBA star started in San Antonio? Shaq, <laughs> Steph Curry, or Luca? Shaquille O'Neal. That's right. Cole High School. Go ahead, tell us. He went to Cole. He went to Cole High School over there at Fort Sam. Yeah, he did. Won a state championship. Went 68 and won two seasons, and there you go. Won the 89 state. Yep. Did you cover that? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> I remember my quick Shaq story, yeah. a real fast one. When he was leaving Cole and was going to LSU, yeah, to play basketball, did a live shot with him in his front yard over on Cole. And we were standing, and I never have seen, he was like 18. He was huge at age 18, and he put his hand on the top of my head, because he was like seven foot, and his palm of his hand was back here on the back of my head, but his fingers like, and I was like, please don't squeeze and turn. <laughs> but he, I mean, like, his hand just covered my whole, So his parents lived. Dude, he's huge. Did they live on Fort Sam? His, his dad was stationed there. And you did the live shot there. So I did a live shot over there. That's incredible. Yard. Big guy. Teddy Bear. One of the guys, his guys in the world. One of my favorite people to follow on Instagram. We got more Shaq story. We can tell Shaq stories all day. <laughs> it's 827, 79 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. It's 830 on Sunday, September 24th. Your alarm may be going off. So it's, but that's my question real quick. Uh -huh. Your alarm's going off right now. Do you have that annoying alarm sound to make sure you wake up, or do you have like some kind of elevator music? Pleasant I have alarm a sound? I have a pleasant like on the iPhone the, the bells <laughs> that's like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Or is it? <laughs> so Sarah says that's her. The, it's, I get triggered by some of the iPhone. Sarah and I were talking <laughs> about that. The iPhone alarms that are like, what? Are, what's the one that triggers me? It's like, I don't know. I oh my I god, it went off in the newsroom the other day and it, I was like, no. Time to wake up. <laughs> yeah. Well, people well, at home are like, oh, no, 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 no. Or maybe they're waking up to your weather. Hopefully. That's a gentle hey, alarm. Hey, good morning, everyone. Here's something <laughs> not so gentle. It's going to be 100 degrees today, potentially for the 75th time. Oh, this year, yep, another hot one for us. 79 degrees outside right now. You can see we've got mostly cloudy skies outside and high humidity. That is going to be the case. Uh, the high humidity is going to be the case all day because we've got these winds from the south, pretty breezy at 10 to 15 miles per hour, bringing in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. And so today's one of those days where as soon as we start to see clearing skies, temperatures are going to skyrocket. 91 at noon, 100 and mostly sunny at 4 p.m. That 100 is going to feel more like 105 because of the high humidity. South winds today at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Notice that late tonight after midnight, our rain chances go up a little bit. I'll have more details on that small chance for rain tomorrow coming up in a few minutes. David. Thank you, Sarah. It's been three months since SAPD officers killed 46-year-old Melissa Perez. So three officers were charged with her murder after Police Chief William McManus says they didn't follow department training. Bettis was said to be having a mental health crisis, something the department has faced criticism for. Avery Everett sat down with SAPD about how the department is looking to expand its mental health unit and what crisis trainers say you can do to help in the meantime. We need more staff. A renewed push from the San Antonio Police Department. We see um, a lot of mental health issues. SAPD Assistant Chief Karen Falk says expanding the department's mental health unit is now a top priority. And once we're able to build this team where we're 24 hours, we have more officers to cover the city. SAPD faced criticism on its response to several recent calls. You're going to get shot! Including the shooting of Melissa Perez. Hey, hey. Chief William McManus says Perez was having a mental health crisis when officers shot and killed her at her apartment in June. The department confirmed its mental health unit was not called. Now it's trying to find a solution, possibly through the latest round of funding from the new city council budget. Hopefully, um, with that push, we'll be able to expand the unit. Some SAPD officers are stationed with the city's SA Corps program, in place to reduce arrest and increase access to mental health services. But in a city with more than one million people, only dozens of officers have advanced mental health training. SAPD is also looking to train all of its officers on basic mental health response. The problem is that could take up to three years. We can help triage so that we're not over inundating the system, so that we're not just relying on those services that are dying for manpower. And we Devin Metchin is a suicide prevention trainer. With just how busy officers are across San Antonio, Metchin says training yourself in de-escalation and asking direct questions can change outcomes. So the more people we can teach to be able to engage in those conversations, the more care we're actually spreading across the community. Even with mental health at the forefront of city council and SAPD budget discussions, 
there's still more to be done. We need more officers in the mental health unit, we do, and we will eventually get there. Those three officers involved with the death of Melissa Perez are awaiting trial. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Well, the artist behind the controversial graphic novel adaption of the Diary of Anne Frank has spoken out after a Texas teacher was fired for having students read the book in class. So artist Adi Fullman told ABC she's devastated by Hampshire Fanet ISD just south of Beaumont. The teacher was fired over a week ago, the day after having students read the book once parents said they were uncomfortable with certain themes in the book. So Fullman writes, it is so sad that today, 80 years after this was written, there are people in the U.S. who are not allowing this to be seen or read by children, end quote. There is an active investigation as district officials claim the book was never approved. However, it can be seen on a reading list that was sent to parents at the start of the school year. The book has come under fire before, also removed in libraries in Texas Keller ISD. The Art Institute of San Antonio abruptly announcing this weekend it's permanently closing its doors. The website does not say why the school system is closing. This includes our institutes in San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, and Austin, along with Miami, Atlanta, and Tampa. Students say they got an email from the school saying the system hadn't been able to recover from the pandemic. The last day of class will be Friday. The U.S. Senate announced this week that a San Antonio native, the highest ranking military officer in the nation. This is Air Force General Charles C.Q. Brown, who grew up on the west side of San Antonio. He has led the Air Force since 2020 when former President Donald Trump nominated him for the position. U.S. Senator, U.S. Senate Majority Leader Schumer confirmed Brown as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, making him the first native Texan ever to hold the position. The Senate voted overwhelmingly for Brown. And USAA says it's offering no interest loans to military members if the government does shut down. Plans to provide loans of up to $6,000 in payment assistant options for its banking and insurance products. Military members will continue working in the event of a shutdown, but wouldn't be paid until the government reopens. Members can apply through USAA's mobile app and website, as well as via phone. The beloved Texas furniture store, Lewis Shanks, is closing its doors almost, af almost after almost 80 years of business. So family members of the founder say changes to the retail landscape and challenges to its business model are reasons for stores closing. They also believe the company's strategy of customizing furniture selection is no longer favored by many shoppers. The stores will be have going out of business sales starting this Thursday. Artificial intelligence being used for almost everything in our lives right now. From helping write an essay to delivering food, businesses nationwide are putting the tech to use. So it's no surprise that some colleges are looking into using AI to draft athletes. Jacqueline Quinn in Fort Lauderdale shows us what this could mean for athletic recruits. If you think about it, there are thousands of young people who would love to play sports in college and even professionally. But that's part of the difficulty. It takes coaching staff members hours to sift through film and stats to find the right candidate. There's a lot of talent out there, but uh, we're always looking for a specific fit within our program and our culture. This is where artificial intelligence is ready to change the game. Dan Cornley is a professor of sports management at Florida Atlantic University's College of Business. You know, from an academic perspective, it, it can write papers for you, you know, in 30 seconds. So any quick information that it can give a college coach um, to help make a decision on a player will impact college recruiting because decisions need to, made, need to be made quick. Rifle, rifle. And speed, just like in a game, is a huge advantage. Because more than ever, there's a transfer portal and we have students moving from campus to campus and coaches need to make decisions on whether they should ultimately recruit them or give them a scholarship. Cornley expects to teach students more about AI as part of his courses in the near future because coaches already expect it to be a factor. So does this mean that the big schools will get the best athletes? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a tough one. Um, you know, that's conference re realignment conversation and uh, NIL deal conversation. Um, that's kind of already, you know, 
taking place for sure. So Conley sees artificial intelligence as a means for more positive growth. Hey, rifle, rifle, rifle. At this point, some coaches are looking forward to seeing what AI can do. Well, whether you're recruiting or coaching, you're always looking for a more efficient way to do things and how you can gain an edge. Um, and that comes with certainly artificial intelligence is going to help do that. That was Jacqueline Quinn out of Fort Lauderdale. Now, Professor Cornley says a football-oriented app has yet to be developed, but he thinks it could happen within the next two years. And speaking of football, UTSA coming face-to-face -face with nationally ranked Tennessee for the first time ever yesterday. No Frank Harris for the Roadrunners, still out with that toe injury. UTSA struggled to find the end zone in the first half. Tennessee carried a 31-0 lead in the intermission. Coming out in redshirt freshman Owen McCown came off the bench in place of Eddie Lee Barger in his first drive. Caught out transfer. Gets UTSA on the board with a three-yard TD pass to Joshua Cephas. So there he is. I believe this is the play we're going to see right there. And there's from the three, and there's the pass. Lefty, corner of the end zone, got it. In the end, the ball stay in the driver's seat, though. They defeated UTSA 45-14. to Texas Longhorns having a lot of fun in Waco last night at the Bears' expense. They scored 28 points in the first half. And the Longhorn defense shut out Baylor in the second. Texas stays undefeated. They won it 38-6. to 2-1 Texas A&M hosting 2-0 Auburn. Aggies quarterback Connor Wegman injured in the second quarter on this late hit. He ended up limping all the way to the sidelines. That hurt right there. Max Johnson stepped in and then stepped up. Aggies up 6-3. Johnson caps off a 46-yard drive. This is going to be a 22-yard Touchdown pass. That's his bro. That's his brother Johnson right there. Busting his way into the end zone. Later, Johnson finds Evan Stewart in the end zone. 37-yard TD pass. AM up 17 points. The Aggies stay on top, winning 27 to 10. Next to AM, AM hosts Arkansas at Jerry's World, AT&T Stadium. Their dad is Brad Johnson, by the way. He used to be an NFL quarterback. And their brothers on the same team? Brothers on the same team. That's such a cool that experience. Cool? Yeah. yeah. And then how did Tech do yesterday? Who? <laughs> Texas Tech lost to West Virginia yesterday. They had a chance to at least tie it in overtime at the very end. But actually, that's all I'm saying. David was in a bit of a mood this morning. I had and a, then I, I realized had a, it was because Tech yeah, lost. I had a computer going, and I was having two games over here on the TV with the remote. And, going. and you're yelling. Poor Dina. <laughs> His wife, Dina. She probably just leaves you alone, she, gives you her, her space on she's Saturdays. in the bedroom most of the time. Yeah. I don't know what she's doing. She's like, I'm, I'm out. 842, 79 degrees. All right, two new parks have opened here in San Antonio. We'll take a closer look next. And Wimby and Ginobili spent some time together this week. Manu and Wimby celebrated a lot of things around San Antonio. Coming up. Love seeing him spotted doing cool things in San Antonio. Not so cool outside. 79 degrees here. Spivey forecasting a triple digit day. But hey, she says there's a chance for rain. Coming up soon, she'll have her forecast. Spurs rookie Victor Wimbanyama took a tour of San Antonio this week with fellow teammate and Spurs great Manu Ginobili. They took time out to hit a crazy half-court shot at the Pass Recreation Area. That's under Interstate 35 near Market Square. Dabbled in some table tennis, plus trekked through one of San Antonio's historic missions. Just a couple of Spurs enjoying some time together as the preseason just about gets underway. That's pretty cool. Can you Thank imagine you being at that places. public basketball court and yeah. Manu and Wimby show up? Oh my gosh. Amazing. Life made. That is the coolest thing. Okay. So starting this weekend, nature lovers in San Antonio area will have an estimated 425 acres Ooh. of new natural areas to explore. So two new parks, Hendrick Arnold Nature Park and True Heart Ranch Park opened this weekend. The San Antonio River Authority has announced so future amenities will include nature trails, scenic overlooks, and bird watching stations. These parks will serve as vital habitats for birds, pollinators, and over 250 native plant species. The ecosystems also support bio networks along the San Antonio Medina Rivers, benefiting migratory species. And I feel bad for all the animals looking for water right now, Sarah. Oh man, they, they need some water out What's there. What's the first thing he does about those pictures? 
Green. Water. And water. And it's, how it's brown Green. right now. Hey, by the way, I you know earlier in the show we were talking about why that parking lot in New Braunfels mm -hmm. might be the best place to view the annular eclipse. It's because it's going to be on the edge. You might see the actual craters of the moon there. That would be cool. But if you're looking for the longest lasting eclipse uh, or, or the full eclipse, that's closer to San Antonio. Okay, so and it's going to be a short time, but you see like more details. Exactly. Now, the thing is, we still need clear skies on that day, and we just won't know until it happens. By the way, today, we're expecting to get up to 100 degrees. This will be one of the latest triple-digit days on record for San Antonio. It's the 24th, so that would fall right in between 2011 and 1926. So the fourth latest triple digit day on deck for us here in San Antonio. It has been a miserable summer with today would be 75 100 degree days, the most on record for San Antonio. 100 is the forecast high, 101 in Honda, 104 in Del Rio, 102 in Pleasanton, 99 in Kerrville and 99 in Canyon Lake. As you look a little closer to the metro area, triple digits for uh, Castroville, Devon, Vines, Gein, New Braunfels, Converse, Floorsville, Nixon, Smiley, all about 12 degrees hotter than the seasonable average of 88. So take advantage of temperatures temp temporarily in the 70s, 79 degrees at the Alamo City, 79 in New Braunfels, 80 in Devine and Castroville, 76 in Kerrville and 75 in Bernie. Dew points are high at the top of the scale. Humidity is high. It's going to be high all day long. So that means a heat index value. Looking ahead to the forecast, your KSAT 12 hour forecast clearing skies today. So by 10, it's going to be mostly sunny 91 at noon, but feeling like 100 degrees already around noon. And then this afternoon, 100 for the high temperature, feeling like 105 to 106. Then later on tonight, temperatures are still going to be in the 90s by 8 p.m. And it's overnight that we have a small chance for rain, mainly up in the hill country. Let's talk about that weather setup and why we have a small chance for rain. That heat high is starting to move off to the west away from from South Central Texas. In its wake, there's a cold front with a low pressure system. This is a very weak front. It is not going to drop our temperatures by all that much. Highs will be in the mid 90s, low to mid 90s by the end of the week. But this low pressure system has fired off a few showers and storms near Texarkana. Those are going to maybe bring a few isolated storms to the Houston metro area. As that front gets closer late tonight, a few storms will develop across the hill country. We're talking more like the junction area up toward Austin. This is going to happen tonight at midnight, but as we head into the overnight hours, these storms are likely going to weaken before they make it to San Antonio if they make it here at all by tomorrow morning. So areas like Kerrville, Bernie, Canyon Lake, Austin have a slightly better chance for rain in the overnight hours. That front is going to stall out and allow for a few showers and storms to pepper the radar tomorrow. Coverage will only be about 40%, but that possibility is there. And if a storm develops, it could produce some gusty winds and maybe even some quarter sized hail. But the main risk for severe weather today is well north of San Antonio toward Waco, Dallas, and Austin. So just to reiterate, here's a look at storm chances. Tonight, only 30%. Tomorrow, only 40%. But hey, it's a chance. And then in the week ahead, we are going to be seeing those temperatures drop into the low 90s for highs with less humidity. So at least a change from the triple digits in our forecast in the near future. With that small chance for rain tonight and tomorrow, make sure to have the KSAT Weather Authority app handy. It's got a radar on there. You don't want to be caught in a storm without uh, knowing where that is, and you can see that on the radar on the KSAT Weather Authority app. I know we said it a couple weekends ago, hoping that'd be the last triple digit. You, you planted your flag. Uh huh. Ugh, I know. But hey, you it, that was going to be for a full weekend. This is just one day. <laughs> yep. I hope that this is our last triple digit day. Did you take the flag out? <laughs> Today, she, I she had to. <laughs> Today, I had to. 852, 79 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Before we go, happy birthday, oh, Sarah Spivey. Aww, thank you. That's Look with that. her cat, Nora, and this is her favorite team. And hey, there's look, the Sarah Squared. Happy birthday, Sarah. Thank there's you. the team. We look like cutouts.